using TINA for analysis of pitfalls related with the feedback capacitor in low-pass filters. Adding a capacitor in parallel with the feedback resistor of an op amp is an easy way of accomplishing low-pass filtering. This technique works quite well in an inverting amplifier, but not necessarily in a non-inverting amplifier. If the non-inverting amplifier has high gain, the filtering is not bad, but inferior to the inverting case. We will illustrate the above by creating and analyzing both circuits. Let's see how to create these circuits using the SPICE model of the OPA132 operational amplifier using TINA. Start TINA to create your circuit. Create the circuit like the one on the sample schematic. Click the SPICE macros tab at the component toolbar. The toolbar of the SPICE macro components will appear. Next, click the operational amplifiers icon. The list of the available operational amplifiers from different manufacturers will appear. Select Texas Instruments. You can now select the Op Amp OPA132 from the list, or you can click one of the items listed under Device to be selected and then enter OPA132. Click OK. The selected IC will appear attached to your cursor and you can move it anywhere by moving the mouse. Place it by pressing the left mouse button. Next, click the resistor icon on the basic component toolbar to place the resistors R1, R2. Position the symbol using the mouse, then left click to place it. Next, add the feedback capacitor. Add the batteries V1 and V2. V1 should be rotated by 180 degrees. Rotate it by clicking first the selected item, then the rotate left or rotate right symbol. You can also rotate components after they are placed. Next, select the voltage generator, VG1. Then from the special toolbar, select the jumpers. The jumpers should also be rotated. Rotate them by 90 degrees. Add the grounds from the basic toolbar. Now you can wire up the circuit. To draw a wire, move the cursor over the appropriate pin node until the small drawing pen appears. When the pen appears, click the left button of the mouse, draw the wire, and left click again at its end point. Next, add the output to the circuit. Select the voltage pin from the meter's toolbar. So far, the components were inserted using their default values. Double-click the component V1. Rename the label to V- and enter the required component value 15, then press OK. Rename the jumper connected to V- to V- as well. Rename V2 to V+ and enter the same value 15, then rename its jumper to V+. Rename the voltage generator label to VIN, then set its signal from unit step to sine wave. Double-click the voltage generator, and in the voltage generator display window, enter VIN to the label field. Next, click the three dots at the end of the signal field, and in the signal editor window, select sinusoidal. Next, enter the required value as it is shown in the Signal Editor window. Enter 1M into the Amplitude field, then change the frequency to 1K. Click OK to save the changes. Connect Jumper V- to the Op Amp in order to provide the negative supply voltage. Click V-, next the copy, then the paste icons on the toolbar. Then connect it to the OPA132 by holding down the left mouse button while moving the mouse. Connect V+, and V-in to OPA132. Enter 100K, the required value for R1. We should set the stepping parameters for R2. 
Click the Select Control Object icon on the menu toolbar, then click R2. The R2 Resistor Property window appears. Click the three dots, Details button, at the end of the resistance field. In the Control Object Selection window, set the stepping parameters for R2 as shown next. Set the start value to 100. Set the end value to 100K. And set the number of cases to 4. Set the sweep type to logarithmic, then press OK. Next, enter the required value for C1. Position and rotate a few component labels by clicking the label first, then holding down the left mouse button. After you place it, just click an empty spot on a workspace. Next, we will create the inverting circuit. As the two circuits are very similar, we will copy the non-inverting circuit and then modify where needed. You can copy the circuit or part of a circuit after a window selection. To select the circuit, click at the corner of the area to be selected. Hold down the left mouse button, then move the mouse and release the left mouse button at the opposite corner. Click the copy then paste icon. Your circuit will be attached to your cursor. Position it by moving the mouse and holding down the left mouse button. Deselect the circuit by clicking an empty spot. Delete the ground attached to R4 and connect VIN to it. Delete VIN attached to OPA132, then add the ground to it. The component labels are renamed, but as we can easily check, the component values remain the same. Double-click the resistor R3. As we can see, it has the same value as R1. You can rename it to R1. Repeat this procedure for all components where needed. Rename the output in the copied, inverting, circuit into Vout1. Now the circuit is ready for testing. In order to step R2, set Parallel Stepping in the Mode dialog under the Analysis menu. This will step both R2 resistors parallelly. Select Mode from the Analysis menu. Then, in the Analysis Mode Selection dialog window, check in the Parameter Stepping checkbox. Then, the Parallel Stepping checkbox. We will test first the non-inverting circuit. Click the voltage pin, Vout1, of the inverting circuit. Then, in the voltage pin display window, click at the end of the display signal field. Then click the little arrow and change the signal to No. Then click OK. Next, click the output voltage pin of the non-inverting circuit and set the display signal to Yes mode or check if it is already set so. From the Analysis menu, select Analysis, AC Analysis, AC Transfer Characteristic. For the lowest curve with a gain of 6 decibels, the stop band attenuation is 6 decibels only. Here is how you can edit the scales on the axes. Click the vertical axis or the text. Set the lower limit to negative 40 then click OK. To deselect the axis, click inside the diagram. Now, test the inverting circuit. Set the display signal of the output voltage pin, V out, of the non-inverting circuit to No. And change back the display signal of the output voltage pin of the inverting circuit to Yes. Select again, Analysis, AC Analysis, AC transfer characteristic. All curves exhibit normal 20 decibels per decade stop band attenuation. Add labels to the curves by clicking the auto label curve icon and then the curves in the diagram window. You can edit the text by double clicking the labels. Edit text properties by clicking the F font button. You can customize the font style, size, or color, etc. 
Click OK to save the changes. Add this diagram and a title to the circuit. Select Copy from the Edit menu of the diagram window. Next, close the diagram window. Then paste the diagram using the Edit and Paste from Tina's main menu or use the Control v hotkey. You can change the diagram size after it is selected. You can move the diagram by holding down the left mouse button. You can move the circuits, as previously shown, to make more place. Add the title by using the Insert Text T icon. Enter the title and press OK. Move it to the middle at the top of the screen and place it by clicking the left mouse button. This concludes our demonstration of using TINA for analysis of pitfalls related with the feedback capacitor in low-pass filters. For more information, visit our website at tina.com. Visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash user slash tina design suite.